great so we specified uh, this condition for stability for linear systems which is uh, connected to the state transition matrix and let's see how to prove it we are actually saying this is equivalent all right so like i said it is actually uh, in a lot of linear systems books you will not see epsilon delta definitions but you will see this as the definition for internal stability all right so um, so of course let's let's see how it's equivalent yeah so uh, okay i'm unfortunately I repeated it i did not need to the solution looks like this so this is the how you define or write the solution for a linear system in terms of the state transition matrix right and you're already given an initial condition x0 so let's start with assuming that this is true so if this is true we want to prove that the system is stable in the epsilon delta sense that we just defined okay so if the rhs holds i know that the norm of x is less than equal to norm of this guy right so in fact ah i don't know what happened but okay right so uh, i i have sort of skipped a step so norm of x is actually equal to i don't need this so norm of x is actually equal to norm of the state transition matrix multiplied by the initial condition vector which by this property is less than equal to norm of phi t t0 times the norm of x0 right just by using my induced norm inequality all right not doing anything fancy here and i have already assumed that the right hand side is true so i have an upper bound on this so i get this guy all right excellent now if i'm given an epsilon i choose my delta as this yeah delta is just epsilon divided by this guy yeah because it's obvious that if this happens then norm of x is less than equal to k t0 epsilon by k t0 and i'm done right well in fact this is becomes less than not less than equal to less than because remember that my initial condition is strictly less than delta okay so keep these in mind huh? the less thans and less than equal tos in the stability definition everything is strictly less than yeah or strictly greater than so delta is strictly positive epsilon is strictly positive initial condition x0 is strictly less than delta then all trajectories are strictly less than epsilon okay so x0 is strictly less than delta therefore this is not a less than equal to but a strictly less than just keep track of these uh, <laughs> um, these are sort of important okay i i not going to discuss uh, too much in length on why uh, but we like to uh, work with open balls or open sets okay and the set uh, norm x t less than epsilon is an open set yeah but norm so this is an open set but if i take this guy this is a closed set okay we don't like working with closed sets hmm? we don't like them basically we don't like to work i mean even when you're doing geometric control and so on we will see we don't like working with manifolds or any spaces with boundaries so so as soon as you have something like this there is a boundary here it impacts differentiability and so on and so forth and what happens on the boundary and these are annoying things we don't like to consider so much yeah so we like to work with open sets because there's no actually boundary here it goes all the way i mean very close to epsilon so yeah we are fine so so keep these in mind 
just just as a i would say just to be a little bit more precise okay it's good to be precise sometimes okay but the important thing to remember is that very easy to choose a delta given an epsilon i mean i think we've done enough examples for you to get a feel for this i hope you just write the solution okay and you write the solution here and and uh, and you make an inequality on the solution if you want to and then what do you need you just need in fact uh, how did i get the delta choice i needed this to be less than epsilon i need norm x to be less than epsilon from this uh, i can in fact directly get what i need my x0 to be smaller than right because x0 has to be smaller than epsilon over kt0 for this to happen right okay so i have simply used these inequalities i need x to be less than epsilon so if i take this quantity which is possibly larger than norm x and i make that less than epsilon then it is guaranteed that x is also less than epsilon so i have just used these inequalities smartly to my advantage right so this is how i always find a delta given an epsilon so if you get a problem on stability this is what you have to do yeah you write the solution and if you have an upper bound on the solution or the solution itself just upper bounded by epsilon and you try to find what is the initial uh, x0 because the solution will always contain the norm x0 itself okay always yeah without that without initial condition there will be no solution the only thing is in the nice linear case initial condition appears linearly yeah this is one of the outcomes of linearity right uh, which will not happen in a non linear case okay you will not necessarily have linearity in initial conditions either okay okay very good one side too easy no problem other way around if i assume stability holds and i want to prove this if i assume this system is stable and i want to prove this happens then we have to make some interesting moves okay if lhs holds it implies what if i'm given an epsilon let's be precise if i'm given an epsilon which is positive there exists a delta which potentially depends on initial condition initial time and also epsilon but okay whatever and is also possible positive right such that if my initial conditions lie in a delta ball then my solutions lie in an epsilon ball okay this is exactly the definition copied yeah now i say something interesting i say that i will fix a ta and choose an xa such that this happens what is this by the way what is the left hand side what is the right hand side what is the left hand side this guy what is this ha huh? is it ha huh? yeah it's weird no it is not it's not um, uh, first of all i did not say xta equal to xa or anything like that notice i did not say that yeah okay i did not say that so this is nothing it's not the solution at time ta or t0 or anything like that okay it is just the product of the state transition matrix times some vector xa okay okay what is exactly happening here the first thing i did is i fixed a time right so that this matrix now becomes a constant matrix right once i fix a time a constant matrix then what is my sort of a claim this is actually a claim in a sense right i'm saying i choose an xa such that the norm of this matrix yeah what would be the norm of this matrix by definition what would it be supremum of this guy divided by this guy 
over all possible x. Hmm? Yeah, but I am saying, and and I had even made a uh, claim here, right? That is always greater than equal to. So norm of a times x is always less than equal to norm of a times norm of x, right? But I am saying there exists an x a such that this equality holds. Okay. In general, if you plug in arbitrary x, this is true. Yes, just by definition of the norm, the induced norm. But I am claiming that there exists an x a because I am now talking about a constant matrix phi t a t zero, whatever a. Okay. I am claiming that I can choose an x a such that this I get an equality here. Why do you think I can do that? Really, I I took a supremum. Do you remember the supremum, right? Supremum is like you know, it's like least upper bound. It does not have to be in the set and all that. It is the supreme. I mean, we saw these examples, right? One minus e minus x, and where it uh, and and you are talking about the set which is uh, uh, so one minus e, sorry one minus e minus x is what it was. No, that was not one minus e minus x. Right? Can't be one plus e minus x. Why don't we do one plus e minus x? Right? One plus e to the power minus x. Yeah, no. Does it work? No, no. What? How did we choose it? Ah, huh, one minus e minus x, and so the set was uh, basically this guy. I get everything from zero one. Right, but the supremum is exactly one. Right, not in the set and so on. Hmm? Why do you think this does not happen in this case? I, I, how can I get an exact equality here? You are saying that is what will give you the. The equality, pretty good, sort of close to it. Yes, uh, but that's for a specific p, by the way. Um, see, if you, um, one of the ways to convince yourself, I mean, none of this is a proof, by the way, is one of the things to remember is that I constructed a weird set here. Okay, I did something funny. I I made an open it some I did open somewhere close somewhere and things like that. I created a funny set so that it fails. Yeah, uh, in this case you are talking about all of R n. Okay, uh, which is both open and closed. Right, you have all the nice properties that you want in all of R n. Okay, the second thing to sort of uh, should help you convince uh, should help convince you is that I have formula here for norm of a. Which is independent of x, right? I mean, anyway, its supremum is expected to be independent of x, yeah. But I have some formula which exactly gives me what my norm is. Okay. So the basically, uh, again, not a proof. This is not a proof. If you ask me for a proof, I'll have to hunt for a proof, in the sense that it will have to be. It has to be based on. It, it's basically based on the idea that the reals have. This nice uh, Banach space type property. Okay, so if I think all of R n, it has a Banach space. It's a Banach space, Hilbert space, whatever. It has all the good properties which we talked about. Okay, so it's essentially based on the fact that you're taking all of R n, you're not making any funny sets, and it's a Hilbert space or a Banach space. Okay, so that's why you will always have an x a for which. Given any constant matrix, you will be able to find that equality. So basically, the max and the soup will become the same. Okay, that's what we are saying. Okay, so that's basically the idea. 
and that is what you rely on to prove this okay once you have such an xa which gives you this equality okay here i have just said that it exists by the definition of induced norm but it's not as simple as that it's a little bit more than that just like we said yeah um uh, once you have such an xa what's the good thing you can actually now play with this system okay what do we do we consider this sort of an initial condition okay don't worry about how this is going we it will sort of you will close the loop and see how things worked out well for you okay but this is the clinching thing here yeah once you have such an xa i construct an initial condition okay i construct an initial condition uh, which is this okay what does this give me if i take a norm it gives me delta by 2 and these cancel out right so i know that the initial condition is bounded by delta right because it is equal to delta t0 by 2 therefore it is upper bounded by delta is that okay i have just constructed this x0 in this funny way okay i am basically going to try to use the this definition to get to this sort of an inequality okay so i am going to i am basically trying to use elements of this definition so i have constructed my initial condition using the delta that i got from stability okay so i know that this the way i have constructed i know that norm x0 is less than delta which means that norm xt corresponding to this x0 will be less than epsilon right so norm of xta i don't compute xt for arbitrary t i now compute xta okay which is phi ta t0 times x0 okay phi t a t0 times x0 i have chosen this x0 in this interesting way okay again this is a scalar but anyway this product the norm of this product is less than epsilon by my stability assumption right so this is less than epsilon by my assumption of stability this is a scalar goes out okay and this product i have already claimed is actually equal to this yeah norm of phi times xa is actually equal to norm of phi times norm of xa because i have chosen this xa in this very special way all right okay and this is less than epsilon you can see that i am already close to the end now okay not difficult now because i have the norm of phi t a t0 basically i have the norm of phi which i want to bound right so i am going to get a bound of norm of phi here right so that's essentially what i have again i have repeated it and from here i get norm of phi these xs cancel out that's the nice thing xa plays no role anymore and i get the norm bound as this guy which is some kt0 okay now you might say that i took a particular ta and i mean i took a ta and so on but remember i said fix ta to begin with yeah so if you say that i fix ta you only prove for one particular ta i will say that you fix some other ta or a ta prime but you can do the same arguments again and you will get the same inequality again in fact nothing will change it will be exactly the same because the right hand side does not contain ta or xa or anything like that all the everything that we introduced goes missing from here on the right hand side therefore you can keep changing this ta to ta prime ta double prime triple prime whatever different choices of ta right hand side is not going to change which means that for arbitrary choice of t this has to hold 
okay so basically you prove the other side of the argument also okay make sense a little bit involved but the only thing that is important here is the existence of an xa such that this happens okay all right all of this works out again because rn is a very very nice vector space all right if you don't have very nice vector spaces but in we don't work with the non nice ones again let me be honest yeah uh, because we've already said that we are working with some non linear space uh, inner product linear space where you have cauchy convergence is equal to convergence so obviously we are already sitting in some very nice vector space okay so having this kind of a property is actually not so unusual okay so what about uniform stability i mean nothing will change you will you will get the same kind of result okay one side the this this to this is anyway too simple because your if for uniform stability this k will be independent of t0 right that's how you will have uniform stability because you sort of remove the dependence on initial initial time so therefore this will there will be no longer a t0 it will be a just a constant k okay just a constant k for all t0 all right and once you have that going from here to here is very easy because k is independent of t0 so delta is independent of t0 done on the other side also if you see no longer dependent on t0 right because you assumed uniform stability so the delta uh, so so this delta is also independent of t0 you started with uniform stability so obviously this has no t0 here once you don't have t0 your x0 does not have t0 okay and this guy doesn't have t0 all right here also there is no t0 so <laughs> essentially too simple right this t0 dependence vanishes here okay so again you get a k which is independent of t0 so it works out on both sides yeah so very simple which is why i am not giving a separate proof but all you have to do is remove the t0s from your proofs that's it that's all you do here all right great uh, finally um, for linear systems uh, asymptotic stability is actually equal to stability plus this sort of a convergence okay so attractivity is this guy but this is pretty evident right because if you write the solution you know that as your solution uh, as time increases this goes to zero therefore whatever be the initial condition your solutions will converge to zero right so this is essentially attractivity in fact global attractivity but i already said that local global is irrelevant in this context okay so if this goes to zero then initial condition is irrelevant it is just some scaling constant okay so everything goes to zero all right if there are no questions we will sort of conclude here yeah so this is uh, basically what we have for stability uh and um, i believe from next time we'll be able to start talking about the lyapunov theorems all right so already we'll get to the crux of how to analyze stability for nonlinear systems without actually um solving the system as you can see very hard yeah even these conditions phi norm of phi less than equal to k t0 or k are virtually impossible to uh you know claim anything on without actually solving the system so you know so this is uh, something you have to do you you will have to do the lyapunov theorem without which for nonlinear systems you can't claim anything yeah except with the linearization methods which are restrictive yeah because they don't give you a basin of attraction all right okay all right so we'll we'll start with those from next session okay